Hello lover friends, given your impressive level of engagement, again we have a bunch of exciting new features I like to talk about. Here we go. After the new add use directive we introduced last week, there is now another handy little helper for Blade for you. Here in this dashboard, I have this nice click me button. And if I click this, you can see here this status message with this little information of what we did here. And this is being powered by checking here on my dashboard view file if there is a session status. And if it is, I'm going to provide the message here to my component. So this is how this works. And inside my controller here, I'm just using the flash message to add this status to my session. And this way inside my view, I have access through the session helper here. I'm sure you already have this a couple of times and you know this works, but now there's a little bit easier way to do this. So we have a new blade directive, which is called just session. And then we also need here end session. And you can see this is so new that even PHP Storm and Level Idea don't know about this yet. The only thing different here is now that we have directly access to this specific value from the session with the name status through this value variable here. So if we go back to our website, let's click this again and you can see this is still working. So this is now a new, little bit more convenient way to use those session messages here. And it's a little bit less to write, which I'm always a fan of. Thank you, Jared. Next, we have a nice new little helper for setting the previous URL of a request inside a test for a route. In this test, I want to make sure that after I update a news model, I'm going to be redirected. So I'm creating here a new news model, then I'm acting as a specific user, then I'm defining here with this from method, the referrer of the request. So this means the URL where I have been before making this request. And this is what we're going to need in order to redirect back. Because inside my news controller here, after updating the news, I'm going to say redirect back. So this means we're using this from method in order to make this work. And then we are asserting where we're at after redirecting. And if I run this test, this is passing, which is nice. And now with the help of our little level community member, we have now a new from route method directly which means we can run it like this. It still passes and this is now a little bit more convenient and easier to write. Thank you, Frag. Then you can now assert against a single input multiple error messages. Let me show you what I mean. Here in this test, I want to make sure that after making a request to my podcast store route here, that we see some validation errors. I'm passing the name passing here an array which of course is the wrong value because name should be we have to rule here a string and minimum of five characters and here we're making sure that we see those validation errors and if i run this this is passing so this already worked before nothing new here but what's now new is that we can also add the other error which we should see because in this case um, it should be also a string and minimum five characters. So we should already see two error messages. So the second one should be the name field must be at least five characters. All right, let's run it again. And you can see this is now also passing. So this means now we can also directly assert against multiple rule validation errors, which you should see here. And before it was only working to see the first one. Thank you, Tim. And last on my list is the new ability to test chain jobs via closures. And again, one more time, we are inside a test here. In this test, we're making sure that a specific um, release podcast command works. And we are faking the bus system. We are running the command and then we are checking that some specific jobs were chained. And if we run this, it passes because this already works. And if we take a look at this comment here, you can see that this is also exactly how we are going to chain our chops here. And now we got a new way to test this is by instead of passing in the chop here, we can use a closure. So the closure gets our chop here, which is a release podcast. So this is important that you type in this. And now on the other side, we can make some assertions about the chop. So this is very similar to other testing features in Laravel. And if we run this now again, this is now also working because the ID 
which we are passing similar to here is also one here. But this is not all, of course, you can test against anything else here that you get directly from your shop, so like other public properties or the queue or something else. So this makes, yeah, testing a cert change with different shops a little bit more flexible and more powerful. Thank you, Jason. So what's your new favorite feature in Laravel? Please let me know in the comments and see you in the next video. Bye.